F2. F2 has been hit. Yay. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. We're doing it live. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, hi. I'm back again for another Let's Raid. It's been a hot minute, but, you know, when I have things like Copa and then life, it's just kind of a bitch. So, I'm with a friend, and this is a fanfic that she did. It is. <laughs> like, 15 years ago. So. <laughs> it's, I've, I know nothing about Harry Potter. Uh, I vaguely remember seeing the movies. What? <laughs> So wow. <laughs> this this is gonna be a first for me because the only Harry Potter yeah. fanfic I ever read from start to finish was Maya Morrill. I uh, knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> so this is this is a this is a fanfic that you did, and if I recall correctly, you said that it gets ridiculous after a while. Yeah, it gets really, <laughs> really ridiculous. In the sequel, so <laughs> that's when it really gets ridiculous. This first part is it gets kind of ridiculous, but it's fairly tameish. But the sequels where things just really get off the rails. <laughs> Holy shit, there are 27 chapters. Yeah, oh my god, there, there are like two uh fans, no, three fanfics that I'm reading right now. For the, uh, for a different let's read, and mm -hmm. they're forty eight chapters in length, and they're bad. They and they're are just, bad. They are just horrible. I'll have to send links to them later, so okay. that way you get an idea as to what we're dealing with. But um, okay. <laughs> so let me kind of explain to you the uh rules of let's reads. Uh, for web comics, it's usually we uh I read a page, and then my partner reads a page. Mm -hmm. For fanfics, it's usually I read a paragraph, then you read a paragraph, and then it bounces back and forth, and then we go on to the next chapter. And then usually there's moments where we're just like, what the fuck is any of this? <laughs> so, okay. who wants to read first? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, sh so, should I start us off then? Sure. <laughs> start us off <laughs> harry potter a lifetime original movie by the all-knowing narrator author's note okay kids i realize chapter one is slow but if you keep reading it does get better i can't help it that i'm bad at beginnings yes <laughs> okay so let me just say this also i was co-writing this with a friend of mine or a friend at the time we're not really we're not friends anymore so yeah, so a lot of the author notes are more her than they are me. So just FYI. <laughs> her mind, I think there's a yeah. But anyway. <laughs> Hermione's face turned a very violent shade of green. Madame Pomfrey stood there with a pitying look on her face, clearly unsure of what to say. It was it was very possible that she had dealt with this sort of thing on numerous occasions, but this time she was totally dumbfounded. Some of the other girls got pregnant, but not smart ones like Hermione Granger. Hermione sat on the bed, silent tears pouring down her cheeks. Madame Pomfrey patted her shoulder. She knew exactly how Hermione felt about the pregnancy before she asked the same question she asked all the other girls with this specific problem. She thought it over in her mind for a minute, oh, moment, excuse me, and then asked a different question. Who is the father, dear? She didn't think it was a very good idea to go any further without knowing the father of the child. Is it Harry? Is Harry Potter the father? <laughs> there was a strangled yelp from across the room. Draco Malfoy's pale, pointed face appeared from behind the white curtains. He fell off the bed, entangling himself in curtains, and he did so, and he hurried himself to he hurried to free himself. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I just I Would you like me to read it because <laughs> I was just like, well, first of all, what is she doing in her room? No, she's in the. She's not in her room. She's like in the like nurse's office. But what is he doing in the nurse's office? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, 
I don't. I, it may or may not be addressed at some point. You I know, don't think it's ever addressed. It's just you know to get the plot moving. <laughs> I just, I just want to congratulate you on not being an asshole with the word and and like a shit ton of commas, even though there are so, so many. I'm just like, why? Why is it always? Why is it always decent stories with commas? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Oh my god, he shouted, making a giant leap for the doors, throwing them open and running as fast as he could all the way down the corridor back towards the grand, great hall, screaming shrilly as he went, his hair still slightly purple from the hex Harry had performed earlier. See, that's why he was in the hospital wing. <laughs> See, I told you, may or may not be addressed. <laughs> <laughs> Madame Pomfrey darted over the open doors, looking stunned and terrified. Draco Malfoy, you get back here this instant! She bellowed at the top of her lungs. Hermione sobbed into her hands. She knew that there was no way Madame Pomfrey would ever have a chance at ch uh, catching him. As soon as he reached the Great Hall, her reputation at Hogwarts would, would be shattered. She continued to cry this way until Madame Pomfrey came back to the hospital wing, looking pale and guilty. Suddenly, a new thought occurred to her. Oh, oh my, my God, God, she whispered to herself <laughs> furiously. Hermione, said Madame Pomfrey, I think it would be a very good idea if you sat down. But Hermione was also too quick for Madame Pomfrey. She slipped right out the door as quickly as Draco had. Oh, come on, she shouted. She shouted at Hermione, whose form was quickly fading away into the dark hole. I'm trying to help, you know. <laughs> See, I don't think I've ever read this out loud before, so this is, this is fun. <laughs> You've never read it out loud? I've never read it out loud, I don't think. Not from the beginning. I think there's, like, parts I've read out loud, but I've never read, like, this first part out loud before. <laughs> um, sorry. Okay. Um, Hermione ran past, uh, ran straight past the Great Hall. except for Harry, who was sitting on the bed reading a book. He looked up, her, looked up slowly, glanced at her, looked up again, and finally registered her shabby fate, a shabby state in his head. Hermione, what is it? What's wrong? She was clutching her side, taking in gasps of air, gasps of air looking as if she was about to faint. Ron, just found out. She took a gasp of air, looking very close to tears. And Draco found out he was in the hospital wing, and he he heard everything. She was hysterical. And Harry, Harry, he thinks it was you. Harry stared at her from his bed, not really sure where to start asking questions. <laughs> That's probably what. <laughs> okay, oh, what? He asked, putting the book down and getting out of his bed. He tried to help her into a chair, but she was gasping for air and about to fall over. Then she started bawling and babbling at the same time. He couldn't understand her for a minute until he heard one word that stood out from all of her meaningless rambles. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did you s just say, did you just say he couldn't self to bring, he couldn't so blah, blah, he couldn't bring himself to say the word pregnant. <laughs> she let out a howl and buried her face <laughs> in her hands, <laughs> but he could tell she was nodding even through her sobs. However, as Hermione was making her mad dash towards the common room, Ron was searching the courtyard madly for his sister, who he had heard was out with Dean Thomas. He didn't trust Dean at all, and was very aware of the kind of things that could go on in the bushes, having experienced them himself on number on a number of occasions. So, <laughs> did they fuck in the Forbidden Forest, too? Probably. <laughs> Probably at some point. Yeah. Take off my bra, bro. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Just assume. <laughs> hey, bye. Yeah. Just as he was doing so, Pansy Parkinson and a number of her pale, evil-looking Slytherin she devils came out of the courtyard, spotted him, and started giggling to each other like mad. 
You could have sworn all eight of them were staring directly at them, although there was barely a reason for anyone to be looking at him. He thought for a moment and that they, uh, oh, whoa, hold on, sorry. Uh, he thought for a moment that they were probably all, all still angry over what Harry had done to Malfoy earlier that afternoon, but he couldn't understand why they would be smiling about that. He stared up easily, wished quickly that they would go away, and he went, and went back from calling for Jenny. It was clear that they were not going to leave. In fact, they seemed to be seeking him out. That's a real shame about what happened to your friends, said Pansy, an evil grin sp uh, spreading across her face, which was mostly unattractive. Now I'm starting to get pissed off with all these fucking comments. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, why? <laughs> why? Why would you do this to me? Comments are my only weakness. <laughs> Ron stared at her, narrowing his eyes as the Slytherin girls all walked over to him slowly. What is this, an episode of Mean Girls? What? Right. He, he was very aware of how outnumbered he was. What are you talking about? He said, sounding a little worried. Oh, you don't know? Asked Pansy, still grinning foully. They didn't even tell you? A tiny laugh ripped through the rest of the group. Ron stared at them quizzically, unable to tell if they were serious or trying to play some kind of sick joke out of them. Something about the look on Pansy's face bothered him. She didn't normally go out of her way to talk to him. Goodness, the whole school knows by now. Even Draco knew, and they didn't even bother to tell you? The look on Ron's face was very different from the one they, they had expected. He knew that the they Pansy had to be talking about was Harry and Hermione, and he felt he was more than obligated to know what was going on between the two of them. What happened? <clears throat> Pansy was disappointed by this reaction. She's pregnant. R Ron's jaw dropped. For a minute, he completely forgot that forgot where he was and why he was outside. She what? She's what? Pansy sneered at him and folded her eyes to the side. Draco overheard her telling Madame Pomfrey that Harry is the father. For a moment, he barely recalled hearing this. In the end, it was, it was what finally snapped him out of the strand. Wait a minute. Harry? He looked very angry now. Pansy was now expecting him to cry or something, but certainly not get angry. He walked toward them, but Pansy wouldn't get out of his path. I have to do it. Get out of my way now. She glared at him. Make me. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing with our lives? I was like 17 when I was writing this with my friend, so that's my excuse. <laughs> just, just, just a 17 year old Alex sitting in her room writing edgy fan fiction. You know. <laughs> As do. you do. <laughs> As you do at 17. As you do. Hey, <laughs> this is 2005, and Harry Potter is, like, at its height. <laughs> like, at its height. <laughs> so, yeah, that's exactly what you do when you write fan fiction. <laughs> you just say, you're just like, go away, Mom, I'm writing fan fiction. <laughs> go away. What are it's, you doing? Nothing. It's not a phase. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I was in high school. Okay. <laughs> what was okay. it? What was it? My mom said it was like, I always thought you would be emo. And I'm like, technically, I'm still emo, but I don't wear black all the time. <laughs> I was. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> uh, Ron made a grab for his wand. Pansy did the same, but he beat her to it. He didn't even have to say anything. She blew off the ground as if a strong wind had pushed her out of Ron's way. She flipped through the air, screaming, and landed safely in the lake nearby. The other Slytherins took one look at his wand, screamed at the top of their lungs, and scattered off into many directions. <laughs> oh, different directions. <laughs> Ron barely heard them. He stormed off to the castle, running as fast as he could. He looked angrier now than he ever had before. His pupils were slits. His hands were balled in the fists, and his face was growing redder by the second. 
He didn't notice the people looking at him or pointing as he passed. He all knew it. They all knew it by now. Miraculously, they all seemed to speed out of his way as soon as he came around the corner. He yelled the password at the fat lady, who gave him a disapproving look. He didn't see Jenny, but he she saw him. He stormed up the stairs and she followed. She had been in the common room for hours and was completely oblivious. Ron slammed into the door. It was too... The two miraculously seemed to jump out of its way. He took one look at Harry, who was sitting on the bed with a calmer Hermione. He lifted one of his bald fists, pointed an angry, shaking finger at Harry. You. <laughs> just, just the most, the most unfeeling of just you. Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> if it helps, I'm like actually pointing. <laughs> You can't, you can't see it, but she's actually pointing. I'm actually pointing at nothing. <laughs> it was you. It was you. It was Coda Mustard in the cupboard. I did that for one of my, uh, for uh, a project. And to get an email back from somebody that was just like, oh my god, I was not expecting that line to be among the sea of lines you sent me, but okay. <laughs> I was like, I was pointing at nothing for like five minutes. My mom had to come in to check in to make sure I was okay. <laughs> how do you know? How do you know your roommate's a voice actor when you when you come in and you hear them like yelling in a padded room by themselves? <laughs> Hermione's face turned green again. Harry took took in a Ron's red face, wand and shaking hand, and understood instantly and automatically. And automatically fumbled around for his wand. Ron, listen. I'm going to kill you so much, bellowed Ron, interrupting Hermione. Ron, stop, yelled Harry, lifting his hand, lifting his wand a little as Ron sl walked slowly over to him, looking more and more like an angry dog by the second. Malfoy didn't hear what he thought. He was... Ron leapt at him, completely abandoning his wand. Harry had no time to react, and they both fell onto the floor. Ron attacking him and Harry doing the doing his best to fight him off and fish for his wand at the same time. Jenny was screaming behind them and Hermione was sobbing again, trying to grab onto Ron's arms and pull him away. In an instant, Neville, Seamus, and Dean all appeared at the door. They all looked anxious, but not at all surprised as to see what was going on in the room. They darted across the room, pulled Harry, Ron off of Harry slowly, and held him back as best they could uh, to the... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Best they could at the other end. Jenny was no longer screaming, but she was staring at them, both terrified and confused. Hermione was across the room, desperately trying to calm Ron down. Ron was still screaming curses and hexes at Harry, but his wand was safely on the other side of his bed, out of sight. Naval and Seamus were trying their best to restrain him, but it was very difficult. Slowly, Harry got to his feet, looking for his glasses, which snapped in half. He looked very different without his glasses on and was now quite angry. What is wrong with you? He yelled at Ron, no longer concerned about Ron's well-being. Are you completely insane? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? You're the one that got my girlfriend pregnant, you stupid bloody prat. I didn't get her pregnant, you idiot. Harry bellowed. You got her pregnant, you flaming git. Jenny took this opportunity. Like our, uh, <laughs> our British slang, isn't it? Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is almost accurate, yeah. <laughs> I have been Very called, clearly. I have been called <laughs> worse things in British, though. <laughs> Ginny took this opportunity to glance at Hermione, flabbergasted. Hermione blushed and avoided her eyes. Ron was still angry, but his eyes were suddenly filled with confusion. He stopped struggling for a moment, looked at Hermione, and said, What? Hermione cleared her throat nervously. I was down in the hospital ring, and Draco overheard Madame Com Pomfrey and I having a conversation. She shot a, an awkward look at Seamus, Dean, and Neville, who all looked if they, as if they'd rather not be in the room. He ran off and told everyone that Harry was, was the reason for my being in the hospital wing. She cleared her throat again. That was, uh, sorry, lost my thought. Ron stood in the corner of the room for a minute, staring at her. Beating up Harry seemed like a very easy way to deal with his, his anger and surprise, but now he knew of Hermione's current situation was not Harry's fault, but indeed his fault. He really didn't know what to say or do. 
Harry was still standing in the corner looking sour and holding his broken glasses. Jenny coughed nervously. Dean, Seamus, Neville, how do you think everything's alright in here now? No. Hold on. What? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. For some reason it like switched back up. Let me do this. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, they were glad to, for the excuse to leave, let go run immediately, and took off out the door. Harry also decided it was a good time for him to leave. Ron was staring at Hermione. They both looked a little uneasy. He followed after Ginny, closed the door, and went into the common room. That night, Harry, Neville, Seamus, Dean, and Ginny all slept in oversized chairs. They didn't want to go back to their room and, until early the next day, when Hermione appeared at the bottom of the stairs, stood across the room, and looked up towards her own dormitory and damage. End of chapter one. Yeah. I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Yeah. This legacy. You gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of me. I just wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my quest, I'ma make it known. They call me obsessive, oh I know. Call me selective with my notes. Call me aggressive with my flow. Call me offensive, even though. Joe, I ain't gonna lie, life's tough. Try to get by, life's rough. Try to do it right, it's not enough. Even though you try, you still mess up. But I'm still gonna fight for what I love. Still gonna die for what I love. Still gonna try, I won't give up. Still gonna fight until I.